in the name of our ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm your host, known here on YouTube or Daily Motion or Facebook or Vimeo and perhaps many other places. I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven. Your brother, I am your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik Ibn Ra. I want to talk to us today, and I would like to direct this conversation towards the males, the fathers, those who come from and are the descendants of slaves born in America. I want to speak to the black man of America, the Negro, or they was once called colored, the African American, you know who you are. I want to talk to us. I want to talk to those of us. We know we are family, but we don't treat ourselves as family. We are divided. We are confused. We are gender confused. In bad shape. And many of us will admit that. I want to talk and send this message to the black man in America. I wonder and I would like to speak with us about what is it to be a man? What is it to be a real man, a real father. I'm bringing this subject up because quite honestly, I want to tell you, I don't know. I don't know. I'm striving and I would like to be a man. Do we have proper examples? I would like to be a father. Who are the correct examples of fatherhood. What are these things? Because I feel as though if the black man, the male who are descendants of slaves born in America, if you and I were true men, if you and I were true fathers, how is it possible that we could be in the condition that we are in today and have been and getting worse for the last uh, some hundred years. How is that possible? How could real men, how could real fathers tolerate this condition for so long? Again, quite honestly, I would tell you, I'm trying to be a man I'm told I'm a man. Just because you have a penis does not make you a true man. Just because you have a penis does not make you a true father. There are other attributes. There are other dynamics. There are other things, criteria that we must fall under to be a true man our true father. Perhaps that is the reason why the so-called Negro or the African American, the descendants of slaves, the male, that's why you and I are not respected in this nation or around the world. No one truly respects us in this country. In fact, we don't even respect ourselves. And the reason why we don't respect ourselves because we really don't know what a true man is. We don't know what being a true father is. Going around begetting children from every woman you lay with is not being a man. It's not being a father. And so we suffer the consequences of not being 
a true man, a true father. So in this lecture, in this talk, this discussion, I would like to explore and wish everyone a belated but happy Father's Day that we explore this topic and understand and attempt to try to understand what being a male is, well we are males, but being what being a man is and being a father. We want to be those things. Every boy is supposed to grow up to be a man. Every boy has the potential to be a father. So we want to explore what has happened, what is wrong with us. The males born the descendants of slaves in America. I would first like to begin by saying this. And I've already said, I'm just going to repeat it. I'm not an expert on manhood. I quite honestly couldn't tell you what being a man is. I'm here to explore so we can share ideas. We can share information. Some of y'all believe you know what being a man is. Some of y'all believe what being a father is. I'm not going to make that claim. Because I really don't know. But what I do know is that this manhood, this fatherhood, this what we represent as being a man and father right now, it just ain't kicking. It's not effective. Something is wrong in our thinking or is there something wrong in our actions. Something is wrong with us. Because there should be a different result from us if we grow to be men. If we have grown to be women rather than just a female. Than just some uh, a woman just being some type of factory to produce uh, babies. I want to tell us this. You really don't see within this ministry, you will never see, and I don't talk about the negatives of our women. Very rare. This is not to say that the female or the black woman in this country is not wacky, does not have problems. I'm not going to say that. And I don't make excuses for ill behavior. However, based on this idea that this the male is supposed to be the protector and the provider of woman, and if this woman is acting in a bizarre manner. If she's not. If she's. Gone savage. She has all these severe problems. Then clearly. The male. Or the man. Has failed to do his job. He has allowed. A wolf. To go among his sheep. He's allowed a disease. To take his flock. So if it is the duty. Of the male to protect the woman. If it is the duty of the male. To provide. For the woman. Then. And she, she is not provided for. She is not protected. So. Whose fault really. Is it. Is it the fault of the sheep that they go places where they should not go or is it the fault of the shepherd so according to what we've been trained and how we've been taught of what about what manhood is then it is the male's fault that the
the woman is in the condition that she's in. And then, since she is not protected, then she hands down these ill behaviors and this savageness, this distortion to her children. And being a woman without a male, a true man, then the males that come from her womb cannot be true men. Thus, in the black community, you see us and our male babies with earrings in their ear. Long hair, pants sagging. This is a result of not having the woman not having a true protector, a true male influence. But it is easier for us to blame the woman so we don't have to have that type of pressure as the males in society. Because we have not really truly grown to be men or true fathers. Another man is providing for our women. Another man is teaching our children. Another male is in the house. And because of our cowardice, our lack of maturity, our not understanding what true manhood really is, then this is the result. And the other man in the house benefits while we continue to suffer. And I don't have to argue or debate. The condition speaks for itself. I have been told because I was raised by a single woman of which many or a great majority of uh, our um, people we were raised in single family, single parent homes. Usually the head of household household was a female. Well, my mother was married. My mother had a husband. She still had no husband in the house. There was no father. Just because you have a penis in the house don't mean you had a father in the house. We're going to talk about this. So what? If just having a penis in the house dictates a positive change or going to bring positive results, that could easily be done. But if the penis or if the male does not have the correct mind, if the male still is not a true man, he's just a penis in the house, he's just a father in the house, but does not carry and don't know what it is to be a true father or a true man, you're still going to get the same result because the woman still remains unprotected. She still, she might, the woman might have a roof over her head. The man might produce, be able to give her food and clothes or whatever, but that's it takes more than that in order to, to influence a community, influence a society. There's another male in your hen house. And y'all don't want to talk about that because you're scared of the other male that's in the hen house. Let's talk about it. But I want to say this. Because I was raised by a uh, single woman because I did not really have male influence in my life. There were males in my life but I understood as a young person that a drunkard is not a good role model for me. He's a male they have children and they call themselves father but that's not a role model for me. The males that was around me was drunkards and whoremongers. I knew these was not real true. They were called men, but they were not true men. They were not true fathers. I knew this. So as a young boy who aspired and wanted to be a man, I'm seeking 
those things. I'm seeking the attributes because I know that these males around me were not what I was looking for. I know that it's, even as a young boy, I knew that I did not want to grow up to be these males. So since being a child, searching, looking, I qualify. And I know what a real man is, deep down. The problem with what makes many people upset is that you're not that. You think that you're a man. You think that you're a father, but you're not. You think because you take care of your children and you think because you take them to the movies and have picnics, oh, that's you doing a man thing. We want to talk about what it is to be a true father, a true man. I want to say, That this subject matter may be sensitive to some viewers. Now the men or those who aspire to be a true man or a true father, you have nothing, you have no problem with, with nothing I am going to say. But there are men who are sensitive. I would suggest that they go about their business. This is for the true black revolutionary male, the true black male nationalist, those who strive and say and make a claim that you are not only that, but you are God. So let us talk about our manhood. Let us talk about Godhood. Let us aspire to some great things. There is great pressure to be a man, to be a father in this society. To be a male in this society that is called patriarchal, meaning that it is the male who is favorited. And that's what I don't understand about some of you men. You are favorited. When a young girl is born, there is joy, and everybody loves the young girl. But when you live in a patriarchal society where the male is favored, the male is supreme, it's all about the man. When a son is born, that's so great. It's celebration. You don't go to go to church to celebrate the daughter of God. Why didn't God have a daughter? Why did it have to be a son of God? Because there is a special preference in this society within the last few thousand years it is the male who has been given special privilege. So when I see males complain about women, that's so sickening to me because in this society, the male, even though you black, they will, you still have a preference. You still are treated with favoritism over the female. It reminds me of Caucasian people who refuse to admit that they have white privilege. You can have in this society a black homeless person, a white homeless person, but because of that white skin in this society, there is favoritism. We know this. And many of us will agree with that until it becomes genderified. And you don't see that the male or the man is given preferential treatment. You have male privilege in this society. 
You don't want to talk about that. Just like many Caucasians don't like to talk about white privilege because they poor. But you still, you still have white privilege. And because you, black man, you can't get what you want. Things not going your way. Instead of, of attacking the oppressor, you want to attack the black female. Y'all so sensitive. And some of y'all, this attack on the on the woman, some of it is high and some of it is low because some woman had hurt your feelings. But this white man, this oppressor in the society, been hurting your feelings, lynching you from a tree, castrating you, doing all kinds of dirt, locking you up, doing all kinds of dirt to you for hundreds of years, and you still have yet to get so upset to do anything about it, not even, not even talk about it. Being a black man in this society, there's a lot of pressure. And within this patriarchal society, in religion, the man is given preference. In this society, it's always about the man, the male. And we put or place the penis so high that many of these men, these fathers, these males, they cannot live up to those type of expectations. Because you're supposed to be the great provider. You're supposed to be the security blanket. You're supposed to be this great lover. You're supposed to be able to, to, to be the keeper, the chain of the family, to keep the family bond together. It's so You're supposed to be the warrior, the soldier. There's great pressure on the male. So, for many men, it's easier to go homosexual. To get out of that crap. Because I can't do it. It's too much pressure. So I'd rather be homosexual. I still have my penis. I still have the strength of a man. They will still call me a man. But I'm not expected to be a male. I'm not expected to be a man because I'm homosexual now. It's too much pressure. And some of y'all don't want to go, you don't want to break your, your wrist. <laughs> you don't want to break your wrist. But you want to, try, want to try to somehow save your little dignity. At the same time, you want to be respected as a male, but you don't want to earn it. Having a penis don't mean nothing. You must earn the title man. You must earn the title father. These are not things that you get just because you have a penis. You can be called a man. You can be called a father. But that don't mean that's who you are. You're nothing but a sperm donor. And see the bottom line for the black man in America is that You've been and we've been slaves. You were a slave. We were slaves for over 400 years. Physical slaves. You never had to be a man. You never had to be a father. You was a beast. You lay down with a woman and the slave master took care of your children. Now, what is so sad is that back in physical slavery, the black male was, was most times denied the chance and the opportunity to be a father. He wanted his babies, but could not have them. But now here we are in 2012, and you have to force a man to take care of his children. You have to make a man love his woman. Well, he don't love his woman. He's a breeding machine. 
the white man has to force this black male to take care of his children by the law. And you get upset over that. You cause that. If men took care of their children, if they were the if they were true men, if they were true fathers, you don't have to go to court and force a true man or true father to provide and give security and be a lover and a keeper of family. But see, we call these people men. We call them fathers, but they are not. They are sperm donors. They are stillers. That's what they are. And they should never have been allowed to breed to begin with. There is something in many so-called quote-unquote savage societies in so-called not modern societies where if a male does not prove himself worthy of a woman he does not and cannot lie down with one. If that was the case in America many of y'all would not have any children at all because you could not qualify to lay down with a woman. And many of y'all call yourselves Afrocentrics, black conscious or whatever, then you would know that in many cultures that they practice something called manhood training. You have to be trained to be a man. They take young boys and a an example of this would be Roots. When Kuta Kente was, uh, he got to a certain age, then they took him off to manhood training. And in manhood training, you are taught about your relations with a woman and how to be a warrior, all those things, how to be a provider. How to provide security, how to be the lover, how to be the keeper of your family. All these things happen in manhood training. We don't have that in America. And as being a descendant of slaves born in America, that was not a requirement because a slave is not a man. A slave don't have to worry about being a father. And we continue to carry that slave mentality so these issues don't mean nothing to us. That's why if you ask the man or the male, what is, what is a man? What is a father? They really don't know. Many of our ideas about what a man is supposed to be, many of our, de our, of our ideas or expectations of what a man is supposed to be, to be come up out of religious teachings. And these religious teachings, whether you like it or not, and the bottom line is, these religious teachings came from men. Not some God, by men. And that's why the religion, the Quran, Bible, whatever you want to, whatever religion that you choose, that's why it's all about men. Well, Muhammad, he's a man. Oh, Jesus, he's a man. Pa Paul, Abraham, is always talking about what the man do. It was written by males. So if it was written by males, what do you expect? Let's flip the script to race. When you're looking at history, when, you, when we are being taught history, in this country, it's always about the white man. We know that even though our people were slaves in this country, even though we suffered great oppression and we were terrorized, the black people of this nation, we were able to accomplish many great things. But that is ignored. Nobody talks about it because it's a white thing. So when we live in a patriarchal society, it's all about the male. It's a man thing.
You never had to be a man. You never had to be a father. That's why the white man called you boy. And like Michael Evans said, he said boy is a white racist word. In, in, and in our situation, Michael Evans is a thousand percent right. But see, also at the same time, this white man knew your condition. You was a slave. Under him, the white man. And even when we, many of us, you heard during the 60s or whatever, they called the white man the man. While he was still calling you boy. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. See, let me tell y'all something about nature. And you, you will uh, bear witness to, to this also. Because I'm pretty sure that you see these things. In nature, the top prize is the female among mammals and even insects. But among uh Many life forms, the ultimate prize is not a car, it's not a big house, it's that woman. She is the ultimate prize. Because the man in his nature has an instinct to protect and move his DNA forward. You cannot move your DNA forward without the help of a woman, without women. So you will see male deers fighting each other. You will see male sheep fighting one another. Male fish fighting one another. All this fighting, all this violence is about the woman, about the female. Because it's about spreading and keeping your DNA alive as long as there is life on this planet. Now, you see this fighting for the woman among males in the same species. Most times, the males in the same species, they just show their dominance and there is really no fight to the death. In some cases there is, but most times, the weaker male knows when to back down and say, you go ahead on about your business. And the weaker male does not mate. Because you want, and the female wants, the strongest DNA, the strongest gene that she can bring forth. In this society, all kinds of genes, the weakest men can, are able to lay down and have babies. So what, I mean, so you look at our society, where any man can do anything he wants to just lay down and so why are y'all act like you're shocked? This society does not shock me. In fact, <laughs> it is so pathetic that some of us, some of y'all even lay down with animals. Some of y'all been with sheep. Some of y'all been with dogs and and goats. So this type of nasty behavior. Some of y'all just. Some of y'all of course. Lay with other men. In this society. It's really pathetic. Do you see. What you are up against. Black man. In this society. Actually in this world. Because no matter where you go. In this world. You will find some madness. You will find insanity. But we see that males in the same species fight one another. So, if males in the same species compete and fight among one another for the woman, what do you expect 
when another strange male, this Caucasian man, comes on the scene. He calls you boy. He wants to keep you in your place because he's dominant. You are the weak man. And he does not want you to be a true man. He does not want you to be a true father. He wants you to be and continue to be a boy. And they still in the in the in the uh, boardrooms and behind closed doors. Why some of y'all dark Europeans and Uncle Tom's and Sambo, why some of y'all skinning and grinning in their face, you know that they still call you a boy. But there's not nothing that you can do about it because you have not yet to grow up to be a man or a true father. <clears throat> there is a picture and if this is the edited version of this uh, of this talk you will see and I posted pictures with brothers holding a sign saying I am a man there is a picture with uh, the words I am a man am I not your brother of course they are talking to white people Caucasian folks the racist Caucasian people especially the males of this nation they are asking I'm a man Am I not your brother? Well, first of all, you can't be a brother until they, until they respect you as a man. And clearly, if I have to hold up a sign, if I have to tell you I'm a man, there's a problem. Because if you are a true man, a true father, your actions, your behaviors, Show exactly who and what you are. But since that is not what you are, you have to sign, you have to hold up a sign because you are a man, you are a father wannabe. Am I not a man? No, you're not. That's why you have to hold up a sign. Because a man or a father earns respect. Whether you like it or not, you're going to respect me. Just like when you walk upon a rattlesnake, you don't have to like the rattlesnake. You don't have to love the rattlesnake. But you're going to respect that rattlesnake because of its venom, because of what it can do to you, its power of what that snake is. Just like you will respect a pit bull, you will respect an electric line, you will respect these things, not because uh, they have to earn respect or whatever. They, they beg you to respect them. No, you know what they are about and you're going to respect them whether you like it or not because of their power. The black man of America has no power. So you, you have to ask another man, am I not a man? You don't know whether or not you're a man or not. Why you have to ask another man, am I not a man? You should never have to ask another man anything. That's why this white man calls us boy. You had to tell them and put a sign around your neck because you're still a slave and y'all still do that. You still tell the white man, I'm a man. I'm a father. You say it with your mouth, but our actions do not show fatherhood. Our actions don't show that we are true men. So you're still treated as a boy. You don't have to, if I'm a, if I fix cars, you don't have to guess what I am. You watch me, take
take a car that was in disrepair and after a couple of hours the owner of the car takes the car and goes on down the street when originally the car was brought to my shop by a tow truck apparently I must be an auto mechanic if you watch me walk into a place and this place does not have water but after I leave you see water coming out the pipes. The toilet is flushing. Then you have to say or must believe that I am a plumber. So if I'm a true man, if I'm a true father, you should not have to wonder what I am because my actions verify who and what I am. The reason why you are upset, black man in America, is because you want to be called a man, be respected as a man, but you're not doing that which qualify you as a true man and a father. And these women, ah, <laughs> woo, let me take a drink. Let me take a drink. See, what makes you upset is that not only you already know that the white man, these Caucasian people, don't respect you as a man because they know that you're not a man. But what upsets us so much is that our women recognize that we are not men either. You talk a good game. You can get babies. Some of y'all think being a man is putting on a gun on your side. Some of y'all think being a man is going to college. Some of y'all think being a man is, is being a good Christian or Muslim or whatever. That's some of the stuff that you need. That's some of the criteria. But we got a whole lot. It's a whole lot of things that we need to do in order to gain the respect from our women where they don't have no choice. And see, you have to work on yourself first, black man, before you can start talking about, oh, the black women do this, and they ghetto, and they work on yourself. There are many drunk men, ghetto-fied, sissified men, deal with the male first. When you can get these black men together, I can guarantee you, the woman will come right with you. Because she loves you, and that's just part of the natural order of things. We are her divine masculines. We are her protectors. We are her providers. We are the woman's security. She is the vessel that we use in order to have everlasting life. And she does not respect you. Because we have not yet learned how to be true fathers true true men we have yet to become the true black revolutionary the true black nationalist because it goes all hand in hand when you get yourself together black man of America it all will fall in place once y'all stop being cowards and become mature grow up and begin to have some type of understanding of the man who you want to be and then this Caucasian man, this Indian man, this Asian man, this Chinese man, all the other men will give you your due respect. I can guarantee it because whether you know it or not, you are the best and the most dominant. And that's what all of these people around the earth is afraid that this black man will find his true self. Woo! Let us keep this talk. Are y'all with me? Let's just let's 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 get this together. And I'm gonna I don't want to talk with us long because I know <laughs> we have short attention spans. But this video will be posted. You don't have to watch the whole hour or whatever. You can always come back.
to where we left off at. The most important things, brothers. Ah. Brothers, let's talk about this. And then after we talk about it and bring this to discussion, we got to act on it. You got to grow up and be a man. You got to grow up and be a father. You got to grow up and be gods. If you understand what godhood truly is. Because if you was a true man, if you was a true father, you're on your way. And in fact, you are the God that you claim that you that you are. If, if you understand what being a real man is. So you are a threat. We are threats to any other male. We are a threat to the Chinese male. We are a threat to the white male. We are a threat to the Indian male. Males don't like other males messing with their women. But since we are not true men, we're not true fathers, we can't keep other males out of our hen house. And if you look at nature itself, the female is not in a position to do a lot of fighting. That's not her job. That's not even her role. You are the defender. You are the top defender. She can defend. A woman can be can bring security. A woman can be a great lover. A woman can be the keeper of family. A woman can be provider, but that's not her dominant role. Her dominant role is to be the nurturer and the caretaker of life. And our being a divine masculine or a man or a father, our dominant role is to be a, uh, a defense mechanism, security, a warrior, a protector of that life. We are a protector of our DNA. Males don't fight. Males don't compete to support another male's DNA. But in this situation, we are fighting to keep up the world and the society of another man. Because we are still slaves. Still have slave mentality. You're working for everything that the black man does in America. Your college degree. You get a college degree. You get a job. Everything that we do in America, when it's all said and done, it benefits the white man. It benefits the white community. It benefits the oppressors. Those who put us in this condition to begin with. So you can scream black power. All you want, as long as you have that white man's picture in your pocket and you spending his dollars, you still, you still in a grip. You might not have that same mentality, but you still are under the grip and the authority of another man. And if that man views you as a slave, that's what you are. I'm sorry, I know it hurts a lot of y'all Uncle Tom Sambo's feelings. I'm a man. No, you're not. You're a dark. You're a dark European Sambo. You are a slave. Maybe it's calling you a slave is, is much easier because I know how easy it is to hurt your feelings. That's what I don't understand about y'all men, about you males. Here you are. You so tough. See, that's another thing. You think being tough, trying to be rough and tough, you think that's being a man. That's not being a man. That's showing that you are a fool. Because if you was a sheep, if you was a deer, that works in, in a, a beast society. But since we are human beings, you have a brain. And since you have a brain, you use that brain when you are against, when 
if you are facing physical superior odds, then you use that brain. What is that old saying? That us. Uh, then what's that saying? But anyway, that brain always conquers broad. Use your brain. We are emotional. Here you are supposed to be a man. Here you are supposed to be a father. This black revolutionary. And y'all act so childlike. Because you act on emotion. Then you turn around and talk about how women are emotional. And many women do get emotional. But that's how they are. Because they have to have that caring. They have to have that open soul to nourish these babies that's acting in wacky ways because they just don't know any better. They have to go through a learning process. But see, if you are a true man, if you are a true father, you are supposed to have grown up out of that infant uh, level or that development. You should surpass those things. But many of you have not. We act like children. It's a brother that's real cool with me, or he was cool with me. And uh, I still consider him, I consider him a dark European. He has never done anything bad or ill to me, really, whatever, except have a difference of opinion. But he can't help, he can't handle that I call him a, a dark European. You are a dark European, you fit the criteria of a dark European. Now, if that's not what you are, then you prove otherwise. But since you know you can't prove otherwise, since you fit my criteria of being what a dark European is, then I, I, I can't be your friend. How silly, see, that's so weak. So what? I call you a dark European. But if you know that I'm a good person and, and you know that you're a good person and we get along, why are you going to lie? Because I view you as a dark European and I put you in this type of category. Why are you going to allow that to affect our possible good friendship? Because we are immature. Now, but at the same time, this person who is a Christian, can tell me I'm going to go to hell and I'm a, basically I'm a bad person because I don't believe in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not upset because you say I'm going to go to hell for not believing in Jesus Christ because that's your belief. Well, so what? That don't bother me at all, period, whatsoever. But you can't handle because I call you a dark European. So, you can call me or consider me something that I don't like and I'm supposed to accept it but I can't consider you something that you don't like it don't make it that's because we are so we are so immature we are sensified we act like the women that we talk about many of y'all gossip spread rumors The, the so-called black conscious community, these males, y'all, debate every, you debate each other all day long, but you bring no competition, you bring no debate to the, to the male in your hen house, to the male that is dominating you. You bring him nothing. You don't mind fighting and debating another male in your species and some of y'all, and in the past, in our history, we have killed other black men. But we black conscious, black power, but we kill other black men. But we have done nothing to this male in the hen house. The, this man who is oppressing us day in and day out. The male who caused us to be in this condition and, and helps keep us in this condition. You have never been a father. How can you talk about I'm a father? How can you talk about I'm a man when you've never been one? You've been a slave.
for 40 years. You just came up out of slavery. So you trying to learn. And like I say, you really don't know what it is because you have not had manhood training. So being a man is guesswork. But one thing for sure, apparently you're not doing it right because you're not getting, re getting the respect that you deserve. Because when the bottom line is y'all don't like it, but you're still a boy. And boy is a white racist word. What is a father? A father is a male parent. You have father-in-laws. You have stepfather. You can be an adopted father. You can be a father because you adopt children. A father is a founder, can be a founder of a race. The father of the Caucasian race, they say, is Adam. Father. A father exercises, listen, I want y'all to listen to this. Part of being a father, part of being a man. A father exercises care over others. A father is a provider. But let us go back to a father exercises care over others. This care does not necessarily mean caring for your own individual children. But Adam, the father of the Caucasian race, that's what I was told. I'm not going to argue, debate you whether or not Adam was the father. But let us just say that the Caucasian is a race and a race had to have to have a beginning. So let us just say the father, we're going to call him Adam. He must exercise care. What is caring? Caring is the ability to look out for what is in the best interest of future generation father. George Washington is the father of this country. George Washington went to war. George Washington did whatever was necessary because he began to exercise care for others outside of just his own personal family. He was looking at the whole, the whole picture, looking at this land as a nation. Thus, George Washington became the father of this country. And those who was not the president became the forefathers. They were the forefathers of all that what we see today. A father begets life. Physically, you go into a woman, make her pregnant, and she brings forth to you a son or a daughter, you can beget life and become a father. But a father begets life mentally or some of us say spiritually with other ideas. I call the Honorable Elijah Muhammad my spiritual father. His ideas. He's not my physical father, but he became a father because of his ideas, of, because he exercised care in his word to another child, another baby. He didn't even know it, but he's a father. Martin Luther King could be called the father of the civil rights movement, the creator of something, the originator of something. The establisher of something that makes you a father. Tell me, black man, tell me what we have as men in this country. What have you originated? Any, anything, any creation that you originated ends up in the hands of another man. 
this racist Caucasian people. You can't protect yourself. You can't defend yourself against him taking something from you. And that's how it is when you're a boy. Most men can take candy from a baby because they children, they boys and girls. And that's how we are treated. Whatever we create, no matter what we create, they take it. Your parents can always take stuff away from you because you don't have the ability to stand up for yourself. So whatever you try to establish, whatever you try to create, another man takes it from you because you're still a boy. Mm-mm-mm. A father is a creator. What have you created? What are you creating? Father, what are you doing, man? We are, we as males still behave and act like slaves. You act like boys. So I don't see why some of you get so upset because somebody called you a boy. You're still acting and behaving like you're on that level. A man must be wise. We act on emotion. We are so emotional. We're so sensitive. I can't talk to you a certain way. I hurt your feelings. Y'all black men, so strong, you carry guns. You're so tough. You're so ruthless when it comes to other black men. But you so sensitive. Oh, don't call me a racist. Don't call me a dark European. Don't call me this and that and that. It hurts my feelings. Respect me. Everything somebody said to you is disrespectful. Uh, uh, <laughs> woo, everything another black man said to you is disrespectful. But this white man has been lynching you, throwing you in jail, kicking you in your backside, raping your woman, doing all kinds of evil to us for 400 years. And when he comes with his gun, when he comes with his rope, the only thing you do, where you want me to, where you want me to put my, my neck in the noose? You so tough, and you allow this devil to put you in handcuffs and put you in jail. Because you're a coward at heart. You're not tough. You're only, you feel with self-hatred. Many of y'all still feel with self-hatred. Black man can't tell you nothing. Any type of black voice, you get all upset. But these white folks can... Throw you in jail, kick you in your butt, call you all kinds of names, do anything, and hardly hear a peep out of you. You gotta watch what you say. You gotta watch what you do. Because I don't wanna go to jail no more. They won't give me my food stamp if I talk a certain way to them. But you a man. But you a father. Your own physical children. Don't respect you. And this is what makes you even more upset. Because your children know you're not a father. Your children know you're not a man. And you just so upset. So you figure if I disrespect another man, if I kill another black man, maybe I get respect. No, you still a sissy. You still a coward. It makes things even worse for you. Do you think that these little gangsters in Chicago that's killing one another, do you think they are respected as being men? Do you think that all these supposed to be tough guys, black men in jails and prisons, you think they are, they are looked upon as, as men? No, they're not. With your earrings in your ear and your curly hair, and your long stuff down the back of your neck. And your pants sagging. Showing your butt to other men. I don't want other men. If it was nothing but women around. Maybe you try to entice one of them. I can understand. But I don't want you want your butt. What other men looking at you. At your backside. What kind of. Whew, 
Man, this is so sickening to me. It makes you shame to be a black man in this country. You have no, what they call, you have no balls. You so tough around other black men. But when it comes to the man, you, you, like a little baby. Yes, sir, sir. I try to be more quiet, sir. Don't put me in jail, sir. Can I say a little more crack, sir? Don't give me 50 years. Sir, can I have some more money on my food stamp card, sir? Can I have a job, sir? I got to cut my dreads. Why I got to do that, sir? That's African. I'm trying to be, you don't want me to be African, sir? You a beggar. Can you loan me some money, sir, so I can go to your school? And then when I get my job, all my money, go back to your society, sir. And you really believe and you really expect to be respected as a man. We can get better. You can get wiser. How is it wise, black man, to beat your children? And I'm going to say, that I, I'm not against corporal punishment. Sometimes you need to uh, not spare the rod because you will spoil the child. But also at the same time, if you are a man, if you are wise, these babies, especially in 2012, they're not idiots. They know things. You ever wanted to talk to your children and explain things? But it's easier to take a, a ironing cord or a broomstick handle or a switch and just beat the hell out of them instead of sitting down and talk to your babies about things. You don't talk to your children. You don't know them, father. You don't know them, Mr. Man. These are little brains. And as they mature, pretty soon they get old enough where they can take a gun and blow your brains out. Then what you gonna do? As a man, as a true black revolutionary, we must be kind to our people. We must stop beating our people, even, even uh, verbally, mentally. We already been beat. We've been lynched. We've been raped. We've been tortured. We've been Tar and feather for 400 years. Why we want to continue this type of behavior? Physically or even mentally. You and I, we must be different from our oppressors. But see, when we beat our children, when we attack each other, that comes from out of that hellhole called slavery. It's still in you. Self-hatred. Whether you scream black power or not, you hate this black. And that's why some of y'all can't stand black women because it, it's not their behaviors. You really just don't like black. You hate your black self because of your love, your black self. How could you talk to them and how could you blame them for your problems? They have problems of their own, but I can guarantee you if the black man was in better condition, they would be in better condition. But it's easier to blame somebody else. Because you and I, this black man in America, you are cowardly. And you are not wise. And you are emotional. And you are a boy and a slave. Might as well flip away from this video because I'm telling you the reality of it. But that does not mean we can't get better. And that's what the oppressor and that's what many other males don't want us to do. Get together so we can solve this in our community. Solve this problem in ourselves which will eventually heal our community. When, when the black male becomes strong, even those boys out there that you talk about, when they see, <laughs> I got to take
take another drink. Don't you know? When these young boys out here who y'all don't like, y'all talk about with the pants sagging and, and all that. When these young boys, see, they were like me a long time ago. They want to be men because that's part of you. That's what you are. The reason why they are like the way they are is because they don't see examples of manhood. They don't see it. And you upset because you think that's what you are. If if you are, if you and I, we so-called male in the society, if we were the true examples, not saying that there are no true examples, but if they saw a vast majority of us, many of us acting and behaving like fathers and like true men, that would affect these young boys. You want to blame that on their mother. All oh, the mothers made them. No, you made them like that. Because you are a coward. Because you're not a true man. You're not a father. You made them like that because you're not a man yourself. So how can you, and what do you expect from them when you're not that? Oh, because, oh, I wear a suit. Oh, because I got some education. Don't mean nothing. But you're a little sissy. The white man control everything that you do. You can't even talk against white folk. You can't even talk against the society. You just a bow down. Uncle Tom Sambo Negro always trying to find some excuse why this life is beautiful. It will get better. These young men don't want to hear that crap. Ain't nothing beautiful about it. And it's definitely not beautiful to me. So when I see these young men on the street can talk with them. Some of y'all scared of them because they look so ruthless, I guess. How they dress. You are actually afraid of them. And because you're not wise, because you silly and you become emotional, if they say the wrong word, they, they disrespect you. They are children. And some of them can be 50 years old and they still childish in the mind. You have to understand that. Just because I'm 60 years old or even 70, many of these people have a childish mentality. They are emotional. They sensitive. They are no different from the little youngsters that was just born 17 years ago. A man must be wise. When he's facing another man who is superior physically. You see examples of this in nature. I've seen where so-called weak males, they did something slick and ended up with the female. And the dominant male thought they got the female pregnant when they didn't. It was that slick, weak male what the male did not have in physical brawn, they made up with the mind. See, brothers, black man, black power family, kill the cracker. All that stuff don't mean nothing if you're not wise. You're dealing with a superior physical force because he's not that smart. He's not that bright. The oppressor is doing the same thing that he's been doing for the last 400 years. Same tricks, everything. The only problem is you don't know how to deal with them yet. Because you are emotional. And you really don't know who you're dealing with. You really don't know this fellow. I want to uh, bring this talk to conclusion. I want to talk about This dark European, this Uncle Tom Samba. I want to talk about these handkerchief heads, like Brother Harvey Superboy always say. Handkerchief heads, Sambo's, Uncle Tom. I want to talk about them for a second. The ones, these people, 
that tell us that we need to accept responsibility and make proper choices. I want to make very clear. I do not make excuses for ill behavior. I also make very clear that we have to be responsible for our sins. And we do have to accept responsibility for what we do and begin to make proper choices. So with that said, I want to say this to the Uncle Tom, the Sambo, the dark European, that these handkerchief heads that tell us it's nonsense. See, that's good. They always tell us these things. But they never tell white people that they have to make proper choices and accept responsibility for the things they do. Because if they did, we would be in a better condition. But they don't. And these handkerchief heads, these dark Europeans, they make excuses and put all the burden on us. We did not create this problem. So you want me to be a little sissy like you and just say, oh, it's my fault. No. I'm going to let our babies know and everybody know who put us in this condition. And since the white man don't love us, I know it's up to us to get ourselves out of this condition because they won't. They like us being where we are. Handkerchief head. Sambo. Dark European. Y'all know who you are. Always up some up the white man's backside. Always licking his butt. Butt licking. Scratching where you don't itch. Gotta be careful what you say around white. Because you don't you don't want the white man to call you a racist. You don't want them to get upset. Is it a proper choice? Is it accepting responsibility? But really, is it a proper choice? To tell your baby that George Washington is the father of their country? George Washington, who is a racist? George Washington, who raped black women? Who allowed our people to be terrorized, lynched, torn feathered, hanged? Who called and made laws to put their ancestors into slavery, you will tell your baby and teach your baby that this man is a father to them. This man is no father to black folk. He was a slave owner to slaves. That's what you were. He's not the father of our country. What? How is this your country? Yeah, black folks built it. But it's not your country. They don't claim it to be your country. How are you going to teach them that history? You don't teach. Is it making a proper choice? You don't teach your babies about Africa? You don't tell them about our struggles, our advancements, our accomplishments? You don't make them proud of who they are as being a black man or woman regardless is that a proper choice? Give them some self-pride. Build some things so that they can say, look, black folks did that. They built that building. Black folks, that's our business over here. And we, we uh, giving something to society. Everything that we get is stolen from the oppressor because this is our country, but our country don't do a damn thing for us. You will fight for this country that has never fought for you, but you won't fight for yourself. You build schools for white folk. You'll, you'll die on foreign soil for white folk, but you don't do nothing for yourself because you are a slave. You're not a father. You're making babies to give to the to the to people that don't give nothing, don't give a damn about you. 
And I'm talking to the so-called black power people too. Black conscious, Afrocentric. You want to have a family. A black warrior. A black soldier in this struggle. You don't have time. And where, how are you going to maintain a family in the oppressor's house? That's just like a chicken laying eggs, living with wolves. You making babies just to benefit your slave master, the oppressor. The chicken laying eggs just so the fox can eat them. At his leisure. If you are a true black man, if you are a true black revolutionary, you do not want to do those things and take upon activity that benefits your oppressor. We don't need to continue to keep having all these babies that benefit, so that benefit we. Do you make baby diapers? So when they go out and get you get baby diapers, you get it from the white man. You have no electric, electric companies. You have no water companies. Everything that you do benefits the white folks. We already have enough babies. We already have enough power to do what we need to do. Then you establish yourself. If not, if you don't gain respect in this nation, then you have enough to go somewhere else and benefit all your work will benefit you. Instead of it benefiting your oppressor. But you are not a man. Black power. Helen. Black power family. All that don't make you a man. Don't make you a, a black revolutionary. It makes you a wannabe. Tripping up some film that you saw from the 60s. You are a revolutionary wannabe. You really don't understand the wisdom. That it takes. You really don't understand that this takes a true man, a true father. Because the bottom line is you want to be like George Washington. Like George Washington was a father of this country. You want to be a father, not just to your own children, but you want to be a father to a nation. That's what you want to be. But you can't be a father to a nation until you, you first become a man. And that's something y'all don't want to be because you're scared, really. You are scared of the oppressor. You are scared of going out and doing something on your own for real. So a bunch of y'all, y'all just, just get together and talk. You talk a good game. That's all it is, a bunch of talk. But you're really afraid because you're still a slave and you're still filled with self-hatred deep down inside. And of course, you are sensitive and emotional. <laughs> I just wanted to bring a little bit of this stuff up. We need to talk about this. And uh, it's another point I want to make before I close this out. There are black men, black males, they talk about black women because these black women have hurt their feelings. Did I, I think I talked about, did I talk about this earlier? Anyway, I just want to remind us, whenever you see these videos, all these black women experts, they talk about black women this and black women that. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes they sometimes... The talk is, they really hate black women. Then sometimes it's like a medium, a mediocre. Whenever you see black men talking about black women, it's because of something in their personal lives, they've been hurt. Y'all always get their feelings hurt. I ain't never seen a bunch of men that their feelings get hurt so easy. But when it comes to this oppressor, when it comes to this white man, oh, it, it's, you, 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 your, your voice get all low. Some of y'all don't like me to talk loud. Stop yelling, Tali. Stop. I'm telling you and speaking how I was, I'm supposed to talk. You're not used to black men speaking. Oh, but that's yelling. I'm not going to 
whole trip with it. I'm going to be me. You don't tell me who and what I am. Take your scissor fired ass somewhere else. You can't because you emotional. Oh, it hurts my ears or oh, whatever. Take your happy ass on somewhere else. I never, you don't do nothing for me. You don't pay none of my bills. You don't stand up like no man. What are you doing to deserve anything? Stand up and be men. Stop all that tacky talk. Oh, they cuss so much. So what? Who gives a damn? <laughs> Y'all too supposed to be men. You're too sensitive. Some of y'all are like this undercover. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, your wrist broke. I've never seen so many folks so sensitive about everything. But but here you are comfortable in your oppression. Going to work, doing everything, like all this, like this is beautiful. Ain't nothing beautiful about living in the United States of white America. Ain't nothing beautiful about living in the United States of white America. Ain't nothing beautiful about none of this. You should be happy to get the hell out of here. Then I don't have to talk about it no more. Then I can speak more beautiful. But until then, I have to talk the way that I talk because this is a serious issue. I'm not here to be all quiet. I'm just like the men. The British are coming. The British are coming. That's what I'm here to I'm a minute man for you and us. The British are coming. But until you become a man at this hour, not at this minute, but once you become a man, then all these things can fall in place. So let us stand up and learn how to be, if we are men, if we are fathers, let us stand up and be better men, better fathers. Thus, the result is a better revolutionary, a better black nationalist, however you want to call yourself. And I can guarantee you, once the men, you don't have to worry about these women or these children, once the men stand up and be true men and be true fathers, I guarantee you, everything will begin to fall in place. But before you can talk about anybody, get yourself together. And black man, brothers, in the struggle, I don't care about Uncle Toms and Sambo, who care about them. But uh, once we get our act together, everything that you want will fall in place. But you got to, you got to stop being cowards. And you got to stop being sensitive and emotional and learn how to use your mind, your intelligence. And our condition, it'll look like it'll change overnight. And begin to respect black men, other black men that's around you. And honor, because when you look at me, when I look at you, we are the same. We are in this together. We need to change this condition and protect our DNA just like other males. White male, Indian male, Chinese male, the male bear, the male deer, like all other males protect their DNA. We need to benefit and protect our DNA. And that some of it give us an idea of what being a true man or a true father, a true black revolutionary, that gives us an idea of what those things really are. Thanks for listening. Let's talk about it. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Talik Ibn Ra. Love y'all, man. And her. Mm. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.